tens of hundreds of activists representing a broad alliance of civic groups are converging on Washington, D.C. today for the country's largest mass civil disobedience against global warming. Dubbed the Capitol Climate Action, people are demonstrating against coal at the Capitol Hill Power Plant, which will still use coal to heat and cool several key buildings, including House and Senate offices, the Library of Congress, the Supreme Court, and Union Station. Last Thursday, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi Pelosi and Senate leader Harry Reid called for the plant to eliminate coal and completely switch to natural gas, which produces about half the greenhouse gas emissions as coal. They called the plant, quote, the number one source of air pollution and carbon emissions in the nation's capital. It currently burns about 35 percent coal and the rest natural gas. Earlier efforts to remove coal from the plant's fuel mixture were thwarted by pro-coal legislators like Republican Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky and Democratic Senator Rob Robert Byrd from West Virginia. I'm joined right now from Washington, D.C., by two well-known environmentalists who will be at today's nonviolent direct action at the Capitol Power Plant, willing to be arrested. Bill McKibbins, an environmentalist who frequently writes about global warming and alternative energy, the author of nine books, including Deep Economy, The Wealth of Communities, and The Durable Future. He's co-founder of an environmental mobilization campaign called 350.org. Julia Judy Bonds is an Appalachian environmental activist from West Virginia and the director of Coal River Mountain Watch. She comes from a family of coal miners and won the Goldman Environmental Prize in 2003 for leading the fight against mountaintop removal mining. Welcome to Democracy Now! to both of you. I want to start with Judy Bonds. Tell us about this mass protest today. Well, um, basically, um, I will be a speaker at the mass protest, and I'm very proud to be here today with uh, the youth of America that's demanding change and demanding that the adults take uh, responsibility for creating a mess. So um, I'm very much looking forward to, to today's uh, mass protest and crossing the line. Tell us about um, this particular coal plant in Washington, D.C. It may surprise many that there's a coal plant right there in Washington, D.C. that fuels the capital. Absolutely. It may surprise many that we're still burning coal, uh, as most Americans don't quite understand where their energy comes from. But uh, this coal plant has uh, been used to burn coal uh, to heat the capital with. And my own senator, Senator Byrd, um, has refused to uh, actually switch over to a cleaner, re a, a cleaner way of burning coal. So uh, this plant burns uh, some coal that comes from West Virginia as well. And one of the, uh, the coal mine that uses this plant is using underground sludge injection uh, by, by underground injecting this sludge, the coal waste, into uh, old abandoned mines and it's leaching into people's well water. Judy Bonds, can you talk about how coal mining has affected West Virginia and also about the massive spill that occurred in, in December? Um, Coal mining has greatly affected West Virginia. Right now, there's there's uh, almost 400,000 acres of mountains that have been lowered. Uh, the tops blasted off. They're using three and a half million pounds of explosives a day just in West Virginia to blow the tops off our mountains, and it's blasting our homes, it's poisoning our air, and it's poisoning our water. Uh, so basically, the people who live where I do, in coal extraction areas, literally are living in, in terror and are being poisoned by the coal extraction process here. And even though that West Virginia still relies upon coal for, for its economy, we should have diversified many, many years ago, about 30 years ago, and we're calling, you know, for a diversification of our economy. Basically, where I live at, there's one mountain left called Coal River Mountain, and it's slated for uh, mountaintop removal. And we're proposing a wind farm on top of this mountain in place of mountaintop removal so that they can still underground mine the coal, but we will have jobs forever, clean, renewable jobs forever, and tax revenues forever for our communities, because we think we have about probably anywhere from, from 15 to 20 years of coal left in the valley where I live at. And explain exactly how mountaintop removal works, Judy Bonds. 
Well, basically, uh, the coal industry comes in and cuts all the trees off the top of the mountain, and uh, most of the time they don't even use the trees. Uh, then they set, they take bulldozers and scrape the the wonderful topsoil from the top of the mountain, and then they they drill holes and and use ammonium nitrate, which Timothy McVeigh used in the Oklahoma City bombing, and they load those charges, and then they set a blast off, and it shakes the whole valley. You know, we can smell and taste the ammonium nitrate and the silica and the coal dust in our mouths in the valleys below where we live at. So when they set off these blasts, it shakes our homes. and. The problem is, it's, it's pretty hard to go to the bathroom between 4 o'clock in the evening and 5 o'clock in the evening, with, and, because that's when they blast. And it, it's literally, we feel as if we're living in a war zone, and we are, and we, we, we are. And, and we just literally live in terror. Uh, our air and our water both are poisoned from, from the coal mining and the extraction process. We're talking to Judy Bonds, a well-known environmentalist uh, from West Virginia, uh, director of the Coal River Mountain Watch. We'll come back with Judy Bonds and Bill McKibben. Then later in the broadcast, Tava Smiley. But before that, Democracy Now! producer Nicole Salazar is down in this massive Washington uh, meeting of 12,000 students, PowerShift 09. And we'll hear some of their voices. Stay with us. Marvin Gaye, Mercy, Mercy Me. He's on the cover of America I Am, Legends, Rare Moments, and Inspiring Words, um, Tavis Smiley's book. Tavis Smiley will be joining us later in the broadcast as we continue with the environmental movement, largest mass civil disobedience plan today um, in U.S. history. Also, a mass meeting took place over the weekend at the Washington Convention Center. 12,000 students from around the country, Power Shift 09. Uh, among those there, Julie. Julia Bonds, Appalachian environmental activist, head of uh, Coal River Mountain Watch, and Bill McKibben, an environmentalist, has written many books, uh, co-founder of the environmental mobilization campaign called 350.org. Bill, welcome as well to Democracy Now! Talk about the significance of this weekend's meeting. 12,000 students? It's, it's almost, uh, it's hard to describe. You know, I wrote the first book about global warming 20 years ago. I've spent two decades wondering what the global warming movement was going to look like when it arrived. And this weekend, we're really finding out. And the answer is, it looks incredibly sweet. Um, 12,000 young people, so fired up, ready to do all that, all that they can to try to slow down this juggernaut of climate change while we still have a, a very narrow window of opportunity to do so. Talk about today's protest and the significance of it. Are you planning to be arrested, Bill McKibben? Uh, if, yes. I mean, we're all planning to risk arrest, and, and uh, it's going to be a very interesting day. It's going to be half victory party, you know. After 103 years of burning coal, on Thursday, as you said, uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi and Harry Reid said, OK, we'll, we'll turn off that coal. Uh, uh, it was a pretty good demonstration of the power of people's movements, even before we had the protest. So today, we'll be celebrating the fact that the people of Washington aren't going to have to breathe that soot and particulates any longer. And we're also going to be energizing ourselves for the drive to shut down the 600 coal-fired power plants still operating in this country. This is a very, very, very symbolic moment, the kind of turn. And, and you know, it's funny. The, the cable news networks and things have been preoccupied all weekend showing the uh, conservative political action conference across town here in Washington, a few thousand people kind of left over from the past. Uh, and the future was at the convention center, with 12,000 young people saying, we don't need the fuels of the past like coal, and we don't need the, uh, you know, the, the ideologies of the past that have bankrupted not only the economy but the climate. Uh, it's time for real change, and you can feel it, feel it. I just hope we've started soon enough. And Judy Bonds, let me ask you something about a federal judge on uh, a judge in West Virginia on Friday ordering environmentalists to stop peaceful protests against the Massey Energy's mountaintop removal operations. What's the significance of this? Well, basically, it's very significant because when a coal company actually orders someone to stay off their property, uh, 
this, the gentleman that they're ordering to stay off the property, Mike Rosell, has basically told me it's going to take more than a temporary restraining order to keep him off an illegal activity. He's, he's exposing exactly what the coal industry is doing to Appalachia and indeed to all of America. So it's, it's pretty significant. That means that, that Mike is poking them pretty hard. Bill McKibben, 350.org, your organization. Explain the title. Can I show off my necktie for a minute? Because they made it for me yesterday down at the uh, Art Convergence Center here, where people are doing incredible placards and things. It's got that 350 on it because it's the most important number in the world. This protest here today is the beginning of an incredible year of activism. The world meets in Copenhagen in December. 